Hi, everybody. Nice to see you again. It's WAPI Webinars. It's Alex Friedman with you and my wonderful guests. Today with you, Company Taxually and the Vice President of the Company Taxually, Robert Mate. And very, very important specialist with us today, Yurai Mahalani. Impacting all countries in, in the European Union. We would be very happy to continue the... <laughs> That's traditions yes. we, uh, with, with WAPI. So, yeah, uh, we'll be keen to continue. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you again. It's WAPI Webinars. It's Alex Friedman with you and my wonderful guests. Today with you, Company Taxually and the Vice President of the Company Taxually, Robert Mate. And very, very important specialist with us today, Yurai Mahalani. Hi, guys. Hi, Alex. Hello, everyone. Hello, How everyone. How are you today? Very good. Very, very good. good. Very good. Robert, yeah. Robert. You, you will have to receive some present for us because you, you are the champion, the champion of WAPI webinars. This is our third webinar with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So I think that the, the first webinar was some sort of one year and a half ago. So the time flies very fast. Sometimes uh, something like that. Yeah, I can re I can recall, but I think uh, around two years maybe because the last one what we did that was a second one and we did it actually like one year ago. Wow! Wow! Time, time flies. Time is flying. Yeah. Yeah. So if it was one year ago, can you please tell us something that has changed at your side? That actually how. Uh, how e-commerce uh, has changed your company. For e yes, for sure. Yes, for sure. So uh, in this year, I think we made uh, uh, such a nice growth in our company. You know, uh, actually, when we spoke last time, uh, we had around, I would say, 50 members in Textually. Now we reached 115 people in our company so actually it's like 65 new new joiners within this year mm -hmm. uh now we are managing around um uh, 8000 vat registrations wow and uh, also we reached uh 4000 clients for who is using our services yes yeah, so last time i think it was around 2000 something on, 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 the, on the last webinar, what we had one year ago. Now we reached uh, 4000 clients. And uh, I also want to say that uh, we turned our third birthday of Textually. So we are three years old now. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, like this, this was, I think, the main things what happened this year. Like uh, we also introduced due to uh, uh, new VAT schemes, new products, what will be the topic today. Mm -hmm. And also our plans, you know, we, are, we don't want to, you know, uh, stand on this position where we are right now. So uh, we are continue uh, in growing. And also our plans are we will do some geographic expansion next year. Uh, we mentioned it, I think, uh, in the previous webinar as well, but now it's really happening. So we will discover uh, new parts of the world. So stay tuned. I just want you to stay tuned and we will introduce uh, all the news in Q1 2022. That's great. That's great. You're growing almost faster than a Bitcoin, you know? <laughs> uh, yes, like we are comparing <laughs> ourselves to Bitcoin, you know? <laughs> no, that was a joke. <laughs> we are more environmentally friendly than Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, so, Robert, maybe maybe you can introduce you right to all our viewers. Ah, uh, yes, like uh, Yurai, he joined textually. Uh, I think uh, six months ago. But correct me, Yurai, if I am wrong, or five. 
uh, I joined in February. February this year, so it is almost nine nine months. Uh, nine so. months. Oh, okay. <laughs> Time is, you know, uh, really like, like flying. So yeah. I cannot track, you know, everything what is happening right now with us. So it's I always need to, you know, just uh, check back the dates and check, you know, uh, what I noticed in my black book, what I'm using, you know, because it's it's really 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 flying. So uh, I will recommend that uh, Uri, he will introduce himself better because, you know, I already made uh, one mistake uh, <laughs> when he joined. So I don't want to do other mistakes. Yuri, uh, Yuri uh, you are welcome. Great. Thank you very much, you guys. So my name is Yuri, and I'm a, a VP for tax in Taxually. So I joined this year to help with the growth of the company, introducing new countries and new functionalities in the product and also uh, I lead the knowledge management function uh, in actually so I'm responsible for the tax rules tax logic in our software and also for the trainings and webinars we are giving to our clients and customers so my, my background is in tax but uh, previously I worked in in tax technology as well for uh, for seven years and that's that's the area which I strongly believe that that's, that's the future for taxation, uh, the automation and, and technology. And uh, I was very excited to join this fast growing actually business. As, as you can see, we are really growing fast. E even since I joined, <laughs> the, the, the team almost, almost doubled. So it so is exciting times. Robert has built a huge organization. Now uh, you're going to explain how to use it, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes, Uri is a really like a key uh, member of Textually if we are talking about like knowledge and growth. So he is really the guy who who is following all the, you know, uh, up-to-date regulations and new rules, uh, not just in Europe, but all around the world in all kinds of taxation. So... Uh, we are really happy to have him uh, with us. And I think this presentation will be really, really useful for everyone who is selling, uh, not just, uh, I would say, on marketplaces, but online via web stores, websites. So, yeah, I think uh, Uri will be the, the person who will be able to explain it in the proper way what to do and what to avoid to be compliant uh, in the business. Okay, wonderful. So uh, this was one of the best intros before the presentation. So our topic today is simplify your VAT. And we give word to you, Yura. Please share your screen and show us what you have prepared. Thank you very much. Uh, so can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Good. So uh, today I will be talking about selling in, in Europe and uh, VAT implications of, uh, of that. So our tagline is, can you simplify your VAT? Uh, and I, I will be talking about the rules uh, for uh, selling uh, within Europe, which were changed this, this year. Uh, and what is the impact on the sellers of, of these changes? So on, on this presentation, I will uh, talk about what, what were the actual changes, what are the potential uh, schemes for simplifying your obligations, and then I will, I will provide some practical examples which we see with, with our customers, and at the end I will, I will summarize it because it's it is a tax team. It's not uh, not that easy to digest sometimes. So I will try to make it as simple as possible, and also then recap it at the at the end. But Alex and Robert, if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to uh, to stop me so I can explain in in more detail if anything is not not clear uh, from from the outset. We will. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Great. So, so the uh, agenda for for this session, I, I will I will explain the, the changes and uh, what I want to say the 
the changes were introduced on uh, on European level union. So these changes are impacting all countries in in the European Union, and the change was made uh, through through the legislation uh, valid for all EU countries and. Uh, there were also additional regulation and uh, guidances, and it's, it is hundreds of pages of texts, uh, which I don't wish on anybody to have read through. So I, I did it <laughs> for you, and I will, I will summarize it uh, hopefully in a digestible way. Th these changes are impacting uh, many, many traders and also many, many industries. And this presentation would be focused on, on part of it, which we see is probably the most important part. And uh, we, we see the, the highest number of queries coming through that. So this presentation would be talking about the sales of goods and sales of goods to consumers. So B2C sales, we, we, we won't be covering B2B sales today. And it will, the, the examples I will be sharing would be focus on uh, non-EU sellers, so businesses uh, based outside EU. But I will be the rules I, I will be mentioning will be also relevant uh, to to EU sellers to uh, to certain certain degree. So this this is the scope of the presentation. So what changes we we saw in uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, one main, main change is related to thresholds. What, what does it mean? Previously, when you were selling to multiple countries, each country had a threshold uh, for, for a particular country, let's say 35,000 euros or 100,000 euros. And once you exceeded the threshold, you had to register in that country for, for VAT purposes. Now, all those country-specific thresholds were abolished, which means that, and were replaced by just one threshold of 10,000 euros for all EU sales. What it means in practice is that if you are a seller who has sales of more than 10,000 euros, you have to register in each country where you have a customer. I, I will, uh, I will uh, show it on, on, on an example. But uh, this change basically means that there are the sellers have to register in, in many countries uh, in, in, the, in Europe. That, that is not great news for sellers because it, it means more admin, uh, more following of the legislation, more tax returns. What is the good news that uh, European Union also introduced simplification for these sellers, which is called one-stop shop. And with that simplification, you can register just in one country and file the tax returns, which are covering sales in all EU countries. Uh, so that, that, is, that is a great simplification. Uh, it, businesses can use it, but it is not, not obligatory. Uh, but there are certain limitations to, to this simplification because when we initially were getting questions from sellers, they were asking, okay, so can I cancel all VAT registration I have in, uh, in the EU? And the answer is, uh, wait a second. <laughs> Let's have a look what, what you are actually doing before you do that, because some transactions still require registration. So don't rush uh, in canceling everything and going to one-stop shop or OSS uh, and wait until the end of the presentation <laughs> when you would be able to decide if you can cancel or uh, what, what simplification you can, you can because use. At this, at this point of the presentation, you want just to run, run to your accountant and cancel all the VATs and let's work yes. for one country. Yes, so let us uh, wait, <laughs> wait a minute or wait uh, 30 minutes until we go through, through the slides before, uh, before you take any, any decisions. Uh, and another important change which happened was that marketplaces were... Uh, introduced additional responsibilities for sales made through them. So for certain cases, the responsibility for charging VAT and filing VAT return is moved from seller to a marketplace. And this, it, in the 
tax terminology. This is called the deemed supplier concept. And I, I will tell, uh, show you an example uh, of, of this, uh, this transaction, but uh, in, in the terms of uh, uh, sellers and impact on them, that is to a certain degree good news because something is, is moved away from them and moved to marketplace. But again, warning, it doesn't mean that marketplaces do everything on, on your behalf. Again, it is just for specific, specific transactions. So this is broad outline of, of the changes which, which we saw in the European Union. Uh, and, and now I will go into, into more, more details to, to explain how that exactly impacts the businesses. So when I was talking about the, the threshold, so in the past, we saw that if you did not exceed the country specific threshold, and let's say you were selling goods from France to Hungary, uh, below the threshold, you would be still charging French VAT and you wouldn't need a Hungarian registration. And the uh, new rules, and when the threshold is very small, it's very, very, a uh, few businesses won't exceed the threshold. If we, if we are talking about successful sellers, they will certainly exceed it. So it means that now for the same transaction, they should register in Hungary and charge Hungarian VAT. So we, we, we will be talking about these cases because it, it means sellers has more obligations in, in other, other countries. Is, is this clear, Alexander? Yes, or Robert. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, this, okay. It's for me absolutely clear. Okay. Very good. So let's let's move to other parts. And uh, I I was talking about one stop shop uh, scheme. Uh, so that registration just in one country and covering all all of the returns. What I want to and, uh, mention. And sorry, uh, the, this the previous scheme. What you showed is it just for B two C? Kind of transactions, right? Correct, correct. All okay. all the examples I have here are just B two B two C. B two B has yes. different rules. The slide was how it was before, right? Yes. So this this was how it was before, and this how it is now. Uh, what I want to show on these slides that. And, and want to mention that th there were actually two simplification schemes. One is called one-stop shop, and that's for the sales within EU. So if you are selling the goods from one EU country to another EU country, then there was another scheme introduced, which is called import one-stop shop or IOSS, which mm -hmm. is for goods when you are selling them from countries outside EU, let's say from Russia, China, US, and sending them to the European Union. But we won't be covering uh, this scheme at, at this presentation. That could be maybe our four, fourth webinar with, uh, mm -hmm. with VAPI. But currently we will be focusing only on one-stop shop, so only sales within the European Union. Okay. And what, what I want to mention, so it, it is applicable but just for certain type of transactions, certain types of transactions. And so it is, as I mentioned, for the sales of goods within the European Union, and it is just for B2C sales, business to consumer sales. Mm -hmm. There are uh, transactions where it is not applicable for. So that, that would be the example why you shouldn't be rushing and canceling all your registration because for some it does not apply. So it does not apply for non-EU sales of goods. So if you are importing goods from outside EU country, uh, it does not apply for B2B sales, business to business. Uh, but what is the most tricky part and uh, which is very often overlooked is when you are moving your goods from one warehouse to another, this mm -hmm. cannot be recorded in OSS, in one-stop shop. And that's where we saw the probably the biggest part of the issues where the businesses usually disregard this transaction or don't notice or don't think that it should be reported, but it has to be reported in, in VAT returns and one-stop shop cannot be used for that. 
Can you, uh, can you provide an example? Yes, I, I will provide an example later in, in my slides. Uh, and if, if you still would have a question, I, I will go through that in, in more, more detail. And it does not also cover purchases. So if, if you are making any purchases in a certain country, you cannot claim your input VAT through a one-stop shop return. The, the one-stop shop return is just for sales. So it, it is also important to, to remember that. So as we can see, it is beneficial, but it has limitations. And that's, that's important to, to keep in mind. There are limitations to, to that. Uh, I, I mentioned at the beginning the deemed supplier concept. So the marketplace is responsible for charging uh, VAT and filing the VAT returns. And so it is for, for the transactions where non-EU business, so business which is not based in, in the European Union, is selling goods in the, in the European Union through marketplace. In, in that case, the marketplace has to take uh, the responsibility for charging VAT to, uh, to the consumer. And again, I will, I will give you example of this uh, uh, so you can, you can understand that, that better. So let's imagine we have Chinese, uh, a Chinese seller and uh, the seller has a warehouse in, uh, in France and is selling goods through marketplace to the consumer in, in Hungary. Previously, the seller would, would be obliged to, to register in Hungary. Alexander, do you have a question? When you say Chinese seller, you mean mm -hmm. that the company is registered in China, is not yes. registered in the European Union? Oh, it's, yes. It's, it, it's Chinese established company. Okay. Yeah, correct. So it, it can be taken Chinese, Indian, uh, US. Uh, Russia, Switzerland. Yes. Yeah. So when we have this seller and they uh, they sell uh, goods, uh, previously they, they they were required to register in Hungary in in this scenario. But now it is it is changed, and the legislation is basically saying that the marketplace is is responsible for charging uh, that Hungarian VAT. So. The, the seller would not need to register in, uh, uh, in Hungary in, in this transaction. Marketplace would take, take the responsibility for that. But that seller still has to be registered in, in France uh, where they, uh, they keep, keep the goods. So if, uh, I, uh, if I understand correct, mm -hmm. the, today the seller that is for established, it doesn't matter where, can have... VAT only in one country, and uh, if if all his sale channels are marketplaces, and if he's keeping goods just in that country where he is established, yes, yeah, th there really will important. be yes, th th there will be some examples talking talking about that uh, where that tricky bit is if you are moving goods from one warehouse to another, another warehouse that, that, that for this seller could, could trigger the, the registration. And the important thing is a lot of sellers, they have uh, no clue like how FBA works. So, so be careful with it as well, because Amazon can move your goods uh, based on some algorithm Mm -hmm. uh, within the like between the countries, so you know you can. Some of the sellers are telling us that okay, but we moved our our goods just to uh, Germany, and we are saying to them, but okay, we see that you are shipping also from Poland or or from Czech Republic. Like, how is it possible? And he's like, I have no idea. Like, I shipped my goods just to German marketplace uh, and to German warehouse, but in some. Uh, set up what is on Amazon, like if you are using FBA, for example, then you can um, you, you you need to be registered in all countries where the uh, Amazon has a warehouse, and mm -hmm. that's something I think what uh, what is also uh, uh, good for uh, for clients that 
some clients are selling in country where Amazon has no uh, warehouse and then they can use like other alternative like for example Wapi where Wapi has some warehouses and the mm -hmm. delivery can be like much faster you know in these countries if you have the goods in the country. But if they have the goods at Wapi warehouse in this country they need the VAT immediately. Right? That's correct yes. Correct. And when you talk about Amazon, you mean the pan-European program, right? And yes. That, yep. And there, I think to apply for this program, you already need all these VAT numbers. Yes, Correct. that's green light. Correct. Okay, Yuri, sorry that we have to take the mic from you. No so worries. No. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good questions. And uh, le let's let's go now through the examples, maybe which will bring more light into into this tricky tricky situation. So I, I will go through three examples, and they could be like simple, intermediate, and advanced in in, a, <laughs> in the complexity. So one <laughs> example would be just if you have sales just from one country, you have warehouse in France and you are selling goods in France and selling goods to other, other EU countries. That, that, that would be the simplest one. So let's, let's go through that, that one first. So you are a Chinese seller, you are keeping, keeping goods in, in a French warehouse and selling them to French customers. So it, it, is, it, it is within one country and this is about direct sales. So you are not selling it through marketplace, you are selling it through your own, own web page and you are not, uh, let's say, working through, uh, making these sales through, through a marketplace. So for these domestic sales, you have to use your VAT registration, your standard VAT registration, and report them in your French, French VAT return, uh, because that's, that's a domestic, domestic sale. If you have sales to other Country. So let's say from France, you are selling to Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, S Slovakia. Now this beneficial one-stop shop scheme applies because instead of registering for V18 in all those countries, you can just register for one-stop shop scheme and you can cover it in one-stop shop return uh, and file it in this case with the French French tax authority. So here it is ve very beneficial. Instead of you being registered in France and five or six other, other EU countries, you would need just uh, your French re registration and one-stop shop registration. So that's, that, that is really, uh, really beneficial for, uh, for you to use, uh, use this scheme. Is, is, yeah. is that clear? Very beneficial, but uh, it's called cross-border in logistics. And WAPI is against cross-border and explaining everybody so that cross-border yes. is the previous century. Now you have to locate your goods at yes. where you're selling and at WAPI warehouses, and then you have 24, 48 hours delivery speed. Yes. That's where I understand the complicated mm -hmm. part comes. Yes. And our second example intermediate complexity would, would be exactly dealing with this uh, more sophisticated delivery delivery model. So th this was the basic one, an obsolete one probably in, in a real real world. But for a, from VAT perspective, it's beneficial because you can use this simplification scheme. How? <laughs> but obviously the business is more important than, than the VAT return. So let's, let's move to the Example number two, just summarizing the, uh, the first one is that uh, in this first example, you would need VAT return in France and one-stop shop scheme. In, uh, uh, in the second example, we have the situation when you have multiple warehouses and exactly for the reasons you, you mentioned, Alexander, and uh, you are moving your goods from one warehouse to another and uh, to, to shorten your delivery times and uh, make, <laughs> make the whole experience and business much suited to, to current, uh, cheap. current situation. And, and cheap. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. From France to Hungary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so th this, again, j just for the sake of example, we have the same Chinese seller, but he has now warehouses in France and in, in Hungary. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So again, for the domestic sales, when he's selling from French warehouse to French customers, uh, he needs to report that in French VAT return. And if he's selling from Hungary to Hungarian customers, he, he would put it into, into the, his Hungarian returns. But let's say that he, he is moving goods, let's say the main, main warehouses in France, but he's moving his own goods from that warehouse to, to Hungary. Or he, he might have much, much more warehouses in, in, in multiple countries, but for the simplicity, when he's doing this transaction that he takes his own goods and, and move them to Hungary, this also has to be reported in, in VAT returns. And that's that's the tricky part because usually people think that's, that's just my <laughs> my stock, I can move it uh, wherever I want, but yes, you can, but you have to report it in, in VAT return. And so you, you have to report it in French VAT return as sending goods to, to Hungary and in Hungarian return as getting the uh, goods from, from France to, to Hungary. Well, so... Can I ask the question? Yes, please. I, I'm not a tax professional, so mm -hmm. my question will be very simple. When I when mm -hmm. I uh, sell the goods or uh, to, to anybody, to customer or to business, I have the separate company or separate name and surname. Mm -hmm. I'm selling in here. There is no company. I'm just moving to my own warehouse. There is no yes. Company. Co correct. You, you you are just moving it from French VAT number to Hungarian VAT number. Th there is no no legal entity, uh, mm -hmm. and you you do not need to have established company either in France or on Hung in Hungary. That's fine, okay. but you will need to have VAT registration in okay. in France and in Hungary. So it's not not an entity. It's it's between the VAT numbers. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is really important to to uh, indicate these kind of transactions, these intracommunity transactions in the VAT returns, because if you will avoid these, you know, you will just think that, okay, but no one will care about that. Uh, we had that examples like in several times from few clients and they are facing right now audits because this is something what the both countries can really easily track if the goods are leaving the border and if the goods are coming through the border so you know it's not a rocket science to to check these kind of uh movement of the goods within europe so and they will then ask you like okay but we saw that these uh parcels went from here show us where you sent those and you will you know uh need to show them and then they will tell you that okay but we didn't saw this in your vat return in 2019 and then uh, you will need to, you know, uh, do the corrections for like uh, back to 2019. And you will need to indicate these transactions as well, because this is something what the tax authority wants to know. And also they can ask you, OK, we see that you, you have sales from Hungary, Hungarian warehouse to Hungarian final consumers, but we cannot see any transfer of the goods. So how how are you getting those goods you know into the country so so this can be like a a, a question from the tax authorities in uh, really uh, are there any penalties for this or they will just uh, ask you to correct your uh, vat return yeah you know uh, it's really different it depends on the country but uh if there will be like no penalty what you can easily get uh, to avoid these reportings, uh, there will be a uh, hundred percent an audit for the full period, or maybe for a full year, what you had, you know, between these countries. Okay. That is the possibility, you know. But there are a, a lot of other scenarios. But yeah. I think if we will, if we will discuss about these type of scenarios, what can happen if you don't report something? Then we will be here till tomorrow uh, mm -hmm. noon. <laughs> yes, but, but but the same assumption is that uh, tax authorities certainly have ability to give you the penalty for that. Some countries love giving out penalties, some are more friendly, but uh, there, there is a very good reason to <laughs> uh, and grounds for, for assessing penalties for not reporting transactions in, in VAT returns. So we, we can work on assumption you, you, you are likely to get 
get penalties. Yeah. Okay. We have several cases. We had several cases this year. This year, like like this. Okay. Wonderful. Understood. Let's let's continue. Good. So then, uh, if if we move to that, like goods are now in warehouses in France and in Hungary, and then you are sending the goods from French warehouse, let's say, to Germany, and from Hungarian warehouse to to Austria uh or S slovakia for, for those which are crossing the border you can you can use this one-stop shop return so you can use it for part of it but the main message from this example is that if you are moving the goods from country to country between the warehouses you have to keep your standard vehicle registration so don't don't cancel those if you have warehouses uh, across across europe here, of course, uh, I have a question, and I think our viewers will also have a question. Mm -hmm. Once up on this picture is where in Hungary or in France or in both? Uh, you can choose. You can choose uh, if if you have warehouses in both countries. Uh, you you can uh, you can choose either in France or or in Hungary. So it, it depends from where, where you are sending the goods, but. Uh, yeah, th th there is a possibility to uh, to make a choice, but th the difference is not not that huge. The, the return will still look the same. It has just the sales to other other EU EU countries. What what we have we have a uh, kind of entity in France, and we usually file these these returns uh, through our French French entity in in France, and have good good experience there. But th there is a possibility to, in to this, choose. In this team, if our one-stop shop is in France, we will uh, uh, show there the transactions that are in France, domestic ones, from France to other countries, in Hungary, domestic ones, and from Hungary to all the other countries. And we will apply all of it in France. Uh, so nothing, nothing to, 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 to summarize it here, uh, so... These, these domestic sales uh, in France okay. will be in French VAT return. Domestic sales in Hungary will be in Hungarian return. These transfers, they have to include uh, transfers from France and uh, to, to Hungary. So that will be French and Hungarian. And this one-stop shop return, that will cover all the sales uh, from France to other countries, from Hungary to other countries. And you can file it, let's say, in, in France. So. Okay. Understood. I, I, I'm rushing a little bit in one minute in, in before you, right? You have already prepared. Them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so you, you, you think ahead. That's, uh, that's good. <laughs> yes. So, so the, the main thing here is the local sales should be always reported in the country uh, of the where, where you are VAT registered and from where the goods are going to the final consumer within the country. And the OSS return is also separate return, even if it's, you know, in friend friends then you have a vat registration locally but you have a one-stop shop registration which is separate kind of uh reporting one-stop shop uh, it is separate number now it's like separate you have vat number and occ number uh oh. There are different schemes and they might have a different uh, VAT numbers, but for this one, which we are describing, you would have the same same VAT number as, as you have in for, for the French return, but you will be filing your classic standard French VAT return and that OSS, OSS return. Okay, understood. Yes, and it can be also a different uh, reporting period. So, for example, you can have uh, uh, in France monthly VAT report and quarterly OSS report. Okay. To make it more confusing. Yes. Everyone is thinking, you know, that, that this, this is a something which, which really will simplify and uh, I will survive right now because I have nothing to do because of this simplification. But in the background of these new reporting schemes combined with the, uh, the previous uh, rules, of the VAT registrations and the transaction types, it's much more difficult, you know, to fill it, file it properly because you need to identify all the type of transactions if it is going to the VAT return or if it is 
a part of the OSS return. So this is really, really important to, to uh, know where and what to report. Okay, understood. Very good. And just to recap those two examples, we were talking about the direct sales. So not through, through the marketplace, just through uh, own web shop of the, of the sellers and no, nobody else in, in involved. Mm -hmm. So the, the most complex uh, scenario is when you have sales on marketplace uh, and in, in multiple countries because the, the rules differ there and that, that deemed supplier, the responsibility of, of marketplace for some transaction kicks in. So just let's uh, keep in mind that this is different, different scenario where the where we are now selling through through marketplace in in this example. So uh, now we have this Chinese seller and he's selling. He has a stock in in France and let's say in, in Hungary and making sales to French customers and Hungarian customers, but through through the marketplace. So what it means? <laughs> there are two two steps here and as you can see it's it's more confusing suddenly <laughs> but what uh, what the seller has to do they will report uh, just the sale kind of to marketplace in, in their french vat return and and that would be without tax so called like zero rated so it basically it it is perceived as that seller is selling the goods to marketplace and marketplace is selling it to to French or Hungarian customers. And marketplace is, uh, is applying uh, French and Hungarian VAT. So that's, uh, th that, is, uh, that is a big, big difference, difference like here. So yes. I was saying that uh, it looks like almost simple selling goods for Apple, Apple export, you, you use zero VAT. Yes, yeah, exactly. That, that that's, that's a very good point. So it, it looks like you are exporting it, but they, they, they are not exported. They stay in France, they stay in Hungary. But from the VAT perspective, they, they look like that because it's, it's zero, zero rated. And where the VAT is charged, it's charged by the marketplace. So marketplace will charge French uh, customers French VAT and Hungarian customers Hungarian VAT. So this, this is suddenly very all very different when you are selling through through marketplace if the marketplace if the marketplace is not in france and not in hungary but for example in poland mm -hmm. they, they they still they still have to either uh, uh, they can register uh, for vat purposes in in france and hungary or they can use oss from their perspective but they still have to have to charge local vat it doesn't mean that they they are based in Poland, they would escape this, these rules. So it, it still still catches. If we are in France, we will file the OCS, uh, OCSS return that, uh, with zero VAT that we have sent it to Polish marketplace. Uh, as a seller, yes. As a seller, you will file, as a seller, you will file French VAT return with zero rated sale to, to a marketplace. To, to any marketplace. Yes, yes, correct. Understood. Understood. So suddenly we see very different scenario. But if the goods are stored in France, the seller doesn't need the Polish VAT. If the seller moves the goods to Poland, as it was before, they need to register for VAT immediately. So yes. exactly. Let, let, yeah, yeah. Let's move to the nice. next slide. Mm -hmm. And here, here the situation is exactly the same and as in previous. Mm -hmm. Even if it's through marketplace, but as as uh, Robbie was explaining, you, you your marketplace is moving goods from one warehouse to another. You have to report it in in your VAT return. So this this remains the same. It you have to be registered, and and when you are uh, let's say subscribing to Pan European program. They, they ask you, okay, you have to be registered in these seven countries where we have warehouses because we will be moving them uh, across across them. So that this this is forcing you uh, to uh, 
be be registered and file standard standard VAT VAT returns. And if if we are talking about these sales from from those warehouses where previously the, the seller was able to apply a one stop shop OSS, now it is again marketplace who who is supposed to report this transaction and tax them and again uh, the uh, the seller will be just reporting zero rated uh, zero rated v VAT. So as as we can see marketplace is is being pulled into into the uh, VAT um, responsibilities uh, and as we also can see in this case the seller even doesn't need OSS because a lot of mm -hmm. transactions there is is taken over by the marketplace. So when we have a look at this, uh, these results, we, we see that they still need local VAT return and they, they would report that as a, as a zero rated sales. Uh, mm -hmm. But marketplace comes to, uh, to, uh, to the picture where they have to submit their VAT returns and tax it in, in those contexts. It looks like if I understand correct, uh, it looks like if the seller wants to sell only through marketplaces, they don't bother at all about the difference of VAT and the issuing the VAT, VAT to customers because all their VAT will be zero to marketplaces. Yes, but this this is only for non-EU sellers. This for EU sellers, this this does not does not apply. So therefore, I, I what I was mentioning at the at the beginning of, of the presentation that this this is focused that this example was focused on non non EU sellers, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, what what the main message is if they are selling just through marketplaces, and uh, uh, then they need only those those returns when they have a warehouses and, and they are moving the goods, but they, they still will be just reporting zero, zero rated transactions and, and marketplace will take, take responsibility for, uh, for charging, charging mm -hmm. VAT. So, but, okay. mm -hmm. one, one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. this, this scheme is for non-EU sellers, for example, for a company from Australia. Yes. yes that anybody from all over the world can easily sell their goods in Europe. They don't have to establish their company uh, in Europe. They, they need to have VAT, to VAT number, understand how to, uh, of course, they need the right, uh, and that's almost it. And they, they can come to Europe and start selling their goods, right? Uh, so the, the, the scheme, the one-stop shop scheme is available for everybody, yeah. but that concept yeah. when the marketplace is taking over the responsibility, that, that is happening for non-EU sellers. And that, uh, the, the, the logic mm -hmm. there is because the tax authorities in Europe have very little chance of recovering VAT from a seller from Australia. But they, they, they can recover it from marketplace much, much easier. They don't need to chase 10,000 sellers. They will chase uh, one or two to marketplaces. So that, that, is, that is the logic, logic behind, behind that. But this, this doesn't mean that you can now uh, decrease your prices of the product because you don't have to pay VAT. So the prices should stay what, what was before. Because uh, if you will use these schemes uh, and marketplace will be responsible for the VAT on behalf of you, they will, you know, cut a little bit more percentage from your sales. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Understood. So what to do if you have already established European company? Uh, I think... Uh, uh, the, it, it is quite uh, quite simple. You can still use OSS. Uh, what, what the main difference would be that uh, that EU company would need to be responsible even for sales made through marketplace and should charge charge VAT VAT there. And also, they need the OSS, right? You're right. Yes, uh, based based on the 
type of transactions they are doing. The OSS will will simplify uh, well, these. The biggest, the biggest headaches nowadays have marketplaces. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it it brought a lot of lot of obligations for for marketplaces. Uh, so that uh, sellers, in in some cases, it's it's beneficial for them. It's a very, <laughs> uh, very different situation for marketplaces who are facing much more, much more obligations. Okay, but still, it gives a huge, very big opportunity for us to bring new sellers from abroad to Europe. Yes, that's the point yeah. behind. It. Yes, to help them, you know, in the expansion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. What so I this was difficult, complex, and challenging. Uh, so I will really summarize it and simplify it with three main takeaways and then distill it even to one over, <laughs> overarching takeaway. And I will explain what are the mistakes to, to, to avoid. So at this at this point now you are going ahead. Usually, usually I first ask the question: What are the takeaways? Okay, okay. okay. So, but 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 you know we are not new <laughs> players. We are not <laughs> new players on the track field, so we were prepared for it. We oh. are already veterans, so you, you can see we we know <laughs> our <laughs> webinar stuff. <laughs> I'm very pleased to hear that. <laughs> so let's go. What are the three takeaways and three main mistakes to avoid? Good. So main takeaways. You, you can simplify the obligations and that one-stop shop scheme is beneficial and can save you registrations in, in, in many countries and you, you would just use, use one. But there are still transactions which require standard VAT registration. So don't cancel everything have a first have a look which transactions you are doing and that will tell you where you can use oss or where, uh, where you cannot uh, and that's uh, that's that's related this these new obligations are related to cancelling or decreasing the threshold so basically uh, decreasing the threshold meant that suddenly businesses has to register in, in much much more countries but as as a reward they could use use OSS. Uh, so simplification is possible, but be mindful if you are really applying, applying correctly. Mistakes to avoid, the biggest one which we see uh, day in, day out is businesses are forgetting about this transfer of stock between warehouses and they, uh, it's kind of invisible from VAT perspective. They, they don't register or they don't uh, report it in, in return. So don't forget about, about this. Keep, keep track and report it in, in the, in the uh, returns. Then we, we had some questions from, uh, from sellers there asking or assuming that suddenly marketplaces will do everything for them. That's not necessarily true. It's just specific, specific examples. Uh, where it, it can be it can be used, and first mistake to avoid what what is uh, getting a lot of questions uh, about is this one stop shop which I described an import one stop shop which is when you are importing the goods and people think that it it is it is the same, uh, but it is it is not and we can do another <laughs> presentation or webinar about import one-stop shop if there would be interest, but just don't, don't, don't confuse those, uh, those two. Uh, what, what I explained, it, it is like distilled version of hundreds of pages of legislation and instructions and, and guidance. And it's, it's still fairly difficult to understand and get, get your head around that. So wh what we did for our, or, or what we did for anybody who is operating in e-commerce, we, we basically created a tool uh, which will tell you for particular scenario, what are your obligations? And it's, it's free of charge. You can play with it, uh, try with that. But here you will click on the, on the new rules in European Union and you can click, okay, so you are business based outside. EU. Uh, we can see just the slide. 
Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But it's uh, about the textual logo. There is a link for it. We, we created a tool for businesses operating in, in e-commerce, which gives you high level understanding of the obligation for a particular scenario. So let's say, and what I want to mention, there were similar changes in the United Kingdom uh, from 1st of January after, uh, after Brexit. But uh, we were discussing the changes in, in European Union. We, we cover both, uh, both changes. So if you click on European Union and describe your scenario, so let's say your business established uh, outside EU and then you are selling goods directly, uh, so not, not through, through marketplace. Yes, I will add here just a little comment that some uh, sellers who are selling on Amazon are a little bit confused that, you know, if they are selling on Shopify as well. So please note that Shopify is not a marketplace. So yes. if you will fill out this and you are selling on both, uh, uh, both platforms, then uh, you need to choose that is outside of the marketplace. Yeah, actually, yeah, this was one of my questions. Where is the list uh, of marketplaces? So uh, not just the websites, but the marketplace uh, that the uh, European government thinks that this is the marketplace. Where uh, is the list? <laughs> th 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 there isn't such a list. That's uh, a good question. <laughs> yeah. Marketplace and who is not? <laughs> yeah, th 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 that is not a list. Uh, the EU just uh, outlined the rules where it said uh, what they consider is, is a marketplace or where marketplace is facilitating the sale. And it is, if, if you are selling through this platform and that platform is setting uh, out the terms and conditions mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for the sale, it is involved in authorizing the payment uh, for, for the goods and if it's involved in uh, fulfillment or delivery of, of the goods, then it is considered marketplace. So there is not list, but there are rules which you should look at to establish if, if you are marketplace okay. or not. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the closest how we could get to, to establishing. But uh, as, as Robert mentioned, Shopify is not acting as, as marketplace. Yeah. Okay, so okay, let's come back to uh, your yeah. <laughs> to my amazing tool. Yeah, uh, and so if if we select that, okay, so I, I'm sending goods from one EU country to another EU country, and then click submit. Our tool will uh, give you the highlights and information. What does it mean for you? So. Mm -hmm. Here it summarized that you are in EU selling directly and selling from one EU country to another. And then it tells you that this transaction is considered as EU distance sale. Person responsible for tax is seller, so not, not marketplace. What simplification is available for you? So in this case, one-stop shop and not import one-stop shop, as sometimes people confuse that. And it tells you what uh, you should do if, if you want to apply for that simplification and then it asks to contact robert for uh, yes and, and th then uh, robert will tell you much much more about it or if you want to play more with that instead you can try another another scenario and go go yeah. through it again to know what what it means for you wonderful wonderful thank you very much for this presentation and for showing your tool i think it was an amazingly practical video very practical with absolutely exact uh, cases and exact problems and solutions for the sellers who wants to sell in the european union uh, i uh, appreciate the job that you have done to prepare all this information very much thank you thank you guys it's very very good very interesting to understand that i now i know that the threshold is in the past so yes Yes. that I had a separate picture with the flags and the trashers I can you, you, yes that you can bin bin that <laughs> but
But uh, yeah, th thank you very much for your time and uh, and inviting us. It was a pleasure uh, to talk to you. And uh, you had a great questions, which uh, made us to uh, think more and explain it uh, so it is easily digestible to uh, to listeners and uh, sellers who might. According to this presentation, I look forward to have uh, two more presentations with you because I have questions about the import OCS and and more uh, about this this one about uh, not about B two B but only B two C and mm -hmm. for clients that are abroad, not from European Union, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, so yes. Do you have you have a separate presentation for the the companies that are from Europe or or no? Yes, we do. Yes, we we, we do. We have separate presentations uh, for companies which are in Europe or for this import one stop shop when you are sending goods from outside Europe uh, to the EU, because if. if <laughs> yeah, we, we, we would be very happy to continue the <laughs> webinar the traditions yes. with, with Vati. So, yeah, uh, we'll be keen to continue. Everybody who uh, liked the video and who has questions and uh, can't wait to hear the answers, you can always contact directly, actually send them email, uh, call them, and they will... Uh, prompt answer and help you to simplify your taxes in Europe and I see in UK also, right? Yes, yeah. definitely. And also in other uh, uh, countries as well right now. So we are able to cover Australia, uh, New Zealand and other exotic uh, countries as well. USA or not yet? Sorry? USA, we are planning to move to USA next year I would say after the middle of the year. Okay. okay. Uh, we, will have, we will need to have uh, one of the webinars about the USA because WAPI is also going there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we can go, yeah. we can go together. <laughs> yeah, we, we can take a flight together to US then and uh, <laughs> we can discover it. So, and all the rest who needs help with the fulfillment where who is fed up with cross-border and wants to have a really fast delivery to their, your customers, 24 to 48 hours delivery. We work in all the countries of the European Union. We help you to stock the goods, prepare it for Amazon warehouse if you need to use Amazon logistics or to send directly to your customers from WAPI warehouses. Please call us. I will be happy to help you. And thank you, everybody. You have something to say more, Robert? Thank you. I have. I have just one more thing for uh, for like a. It's, it's like a Christmas surprise for everyone. Wonderful. So uh, I just wanted to mention by the end of this webinar that every client who is coming from Wapi and are using Wapi services as well to us, uh, they just need to indicate Wapi twenty twenty one. Uh, into the subject of the mail or into the communication with our customer care or uh, in every kind of communication, and they will get an instant discount of 10% for all our services. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can, I can give the same, the same Christmas present for all Taxually clients. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's an inquiry and write Taxually 2021 and 2022 because it's almost over there. Yes. <laughs> the past conditions and the uh, ten percent discount for our service. Perfect. Perfect for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great new year. You too. Thank Wish you. Uh, happy, happy, happy holidays. Happy All the best. In, in two weeks already. <laughs> <laughs> yes.